What is going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be talking about the difference between EC2, ECS, and Lambda functions in AWS. Uh, so these are different compute options in the AWS ecosystem. And when I say compute, I mean like where you host your applications. And uh, there's a bunch of different options here, as you can tell, and each are slightly different depending on what you're trying to do in AWS. So the goal of this video is to help you understand what EC2, ECS, and Lambda are. And hopefully in the end, you'll be armed with more information so that you can pick whichever solution is right for your next project. Okay, so let's get started by talking about EC2. So EC2 stands for Elastic Cloud Cloud Compute, Elastic Cloud Compute. And EC2 is essentially working in the domain of instances. So you manage instances or virtual machines that you could spin up or down at any time you want. So if you think about how this compares to kind of buying your own hardware and hosting that in-house in your local network, well, with EC2s, you can just basically bring an instance up whenever you need it, tear it down whenever you need it. So you don't need to pay for that long-term commitment of purchasing hardware. Uh, so with selecting instances, it comes down to picking the different types that are dependent on your use case. So for instance, there's memory optimized tier, there's compute optimized tier, there's storage class, uh, there's GPU processing class. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different classes here and then different sizes as well. So there's X2, X4, X8, and X16. Uh, so the size that you select is dependent on the capacity that you need and the classification that you select, whether it's memory, compute, or storage, is is dependent on your use case. Now, one of the main reasons that people love using EC2s is because they're extremely flexible, extremely flexible. Uh, and that's because like you're renting instances, you can do whatever you want with these. You can install databases, you can put a WordPress site, uh, you can host a EMR cluster if you really want by joining multiple EC2 instances together. Uh, you can essentially do whatever you want. Now, in terms of some of the cons of EC2s, you need to worry about security. So locking down your instance, making sure there's no vulnerabilities, getting in or out. Uh, so things like that, making sure OS is patched and everything is up to date. Um, so before I move on to explain ECS and Lambda, I just kind of want to run you through uh, how you would host an application, like a web application if you're using EC2. And we're going to compare this between the ECS option and the Lambda option in a few moments when we get to that. So if you're looking to use a set of EC2 machines as a fleet to handle a web application, uh, you need a couple things. So you need what's called the load balancer, which is kind of this box here. You also need target groups target groups and associated with each target group is an auto scaling group, auto scaling group. And then within the auto scaling groups, those are where your instances are actually located. So just to recap, this is a uh, target group and these are uh, ASGs, which basically control uh, bringing machines up or down for auto scaling purposes. Um, so this is kind of what a application would look like on EC2 for a web app purpose. So your request would come here, they would hit that load balancer, your load balancer is delegating work to certain target groups. Within those target groups are auto scaling groups that spin up or spin down hosts, depending on what capacity your system is running at. And then within that, these are where the EC2 instances are actually the ones fielding the traffic and returning that response all the way back to the caller. So just to recap here, the key idea of EC2s are that you manage the particular instances, all the pros and cons that come with that. Uh, and basically the big pro of using EC2s is the fact that it's extremely flexible and you can do whatever you want. Now, how does that compare to ECS? Now, ECS stands for Elastic Container Store, uh, and it's useful for those of you that are already embedded in the Docker ecosystem, so Docker ecosystem. Now, in the ECS model, you're operating on clusters and tasks. Clusters and tasks. And within a cluster is just a set of EC2 machines. So, you know, you're still operating infrastructure here. You still need to manage these infrastructures if you're just using the default clusters. Basically the mental model to use for default ECS is that you treat a 
pool of EC2 instances as just abstract resources. And then you deploy tasks to these clusters. And these tasks can either be long living, such as you know hosting an application and just receiving traffic, or they could be one-off things where you just kind of want to fire something and forget. Maybe they're like a really long running task that you need to perform or some kind of batch processing job that needs to take you know 20 minutes, 30 minutes, even up to an hour. Uh, so this is the idea with ECS. You're operating on Docker containers. And with these Docker containers, you are deploying them inside clusters where you select the number of tasks or the number of containers that you would like to provision as part of that cluster. And the idea with ECS is that you don't need to worry about kind of managing the cluster itself. So you can specify how many containers you want at any given time, whether or not you want them to scale up or down based on any key metric. But the key idea here is that you're operating the domain of Docker. So if you're already embedded in the Docker ecosystem, then ECS makes a lot of sense for you. Now, the neat thing about ECS, I mentioned here that you're managing EC2 machines, but you can also have your own on-premise machine. So maybe you have like another option here. You have kind of some leftover hardware that you have in your ecosystem on your work network. So you can also tie that into your ECS cluster and use that to kind of pair with EC2 machines. So it's an interesting attribute of ECS. Now, when you're using ECS, you're typically gonna be combining it with Elastic Container Repository, which is basically the private hub where you store and maintain your images that you want to deploy into tasks. So you deploy your images images into tasks and th those tasks can operate within the context of a cluster. Uh, so that's what ECS is. So let's kind of draw the same kind of diagram that we have over here on the left here, but for Docker. So in Docker, we can have a cluster. So let's just say this uh, blue box represents our cluster. And then if we're managing with EC2 machines, now there is a different option, it's called Fargate, where you don't even need to worry about EC2 machines. And Fargate is kind of an alternative option when you're selecting your cluster configuration in ECS. I'll explain that in a moment, but um, let's assume that we're using EC2 here. So say we have two EC2 machines in this cluster. Now how ECS works, so ECS would kind of be managing this cluster, so they may be sitting outside here. Uh, so how ECS works in the context of EC2 is that you install this agent that attaches onto your EC2 machine. Uh, so this is kind of the ECS agent and your ECS kind of control plane out here communicates with these agents and tell it whether or not they want to spin up or down Docker containers. Uh, so you'd have your Docker containers here that would also be existing. But basically these uh, agents are spinning up containers or bringing them up or down based on some kind of metric and whatever the ECS kind of control plane is delegating. So as you can imagine, you can host a pretty large application here if you just add more of these uh, EC2 instances. And what's neat is that you also get load balancers for free. So when you're fielding traffic, you can attach a load balancer here and I'll just kind of shade this in to represent that. Uh, so when a request comes in, it'll hit the load balancer first. The request will be delegated to one of the containers that exist on the machine. Maybe it's this one or this one. And then the the response is returned all the way back. Now, this is different if you're using the Fargate option and in the Fargate option, you don't even worry about um, EC2 machines. That layer is abstracted away from you. So you're only working on the unit of Docker containers or Docker tasks in the ECS context. Uh, so that you do have to pay a little bit of a premium if you're using Fargate, but just keep that in mind when you're deciding. Uh, if you want to manage your EC2 machines, then use the default configuration. If you don't and want to pay a premium, then use Fargate. Fargate. Uh, that's essentially what it boils down to. Uh, so to recap, the key ideas are ECS, are that you deploy your images to ECR, Elastic Container Repository. You attach them or associate them to tasks. Those tasks are deployed into clusters and clusters can be of different types that can be EC2 based or Fargate based. And then you can do things like attach load balancers here so that you can have a pretty robust and scalable system that can be flexible based on your traffic patterns. So let's move on to Lambda now. And Lambdas are slightly different because they abstract a lot of the complexity that you see in ECS and EC2 away from you at the sacrifice of control. So with Lambdas, you operate at the function level. There's no containers and there's no concept of infrastructure in the Lambda world. So how do things work with Lambda? Well, with Lambda, it essentially works on the unit of code. 
So you don't need to worry about creating or managing infrastructure, Docker containers, or EC2 instances, or security, or any of the complexity that you're seeing on this left-hand side of the image here. Uh, you essentially just upload some code to the Lambda function console. So this can either be like a zip file or like a jar file. And essentially you just give it an entry point to your function. So, you know, you have this jar which can contain hundreds, thousands of files that you potentially want, but you just give it an entry point. So the file that you want to serve as the entry, entry point and the name of the function that you want to serve as the entry point. And then what you get back is essentially just an ID, which is an ARN. It stands for Amazon resource name. Now, whenever you want to invoke this code now that you uploaded to the AWS console, all you need to do is use the AWS Lambda SDK and invoke this ARN. And behind the scenes, Lambda will provision an EC2 instance. It'll load up all this code onto that machine and it'll invoke the function of whatever you uploaded to the console. So you can imagine this is a very, very powerful concept if now we don't really need to worry about infrastructure all we need to worry about is the code that we are uploading and the business problem that we're trying to solve so how does this um, web application example look like if we're using lambda functions well it works very simply so all we have to do let me just divide this here uh, so all we have to do is upload our code and we create a lambda function and we have a handler for our rest api uh, that takes a certain input and returns a certain output now we can combine lambdas with API Gateway. Uh, so this is API Gateway, which is another service offered by AWS. And basically we can hook this up so that whenever a user makes a request to a particular endpoint that we are hosting, it'll forward that request to this Lambda function. And behind the scenes, like all we see from the user perspective is that we have a Lambda function. We don't know about infrastructure. We don't know about anything else, but behind this kind of curtain of complexity um, that's hidden from us, Lambda is having like a load balancer here. They're having target groups uh, or Docker containers like we saw in the ECS example, and they have EC2 machines. So they are shielding you from a lot of the complexity that you would normally have to worry about if you were using something like EC2, but instead, because you're using Lambda functions and only operating on code, that all this complexity is hidden from you. Uh, so it's very, very great for hosting applications where you just wanna favor simplicity over customization. Um, and so this is the real attractive feature, feature of Lambda functions. So to recap everything that we've talked about so far, EC2, you manage infrastructure, right? And you have to pick the type of infrastructure that you want. It's extremely flexible, but you need to worry about security and all the negative things that come out of that. With ECS, you are operating in the system of Docker. So you have Docker images that get associated with tasks and you associate these tasks with clusters and these clusters can operate on a fleet of EC2 machines or abstract computing units in the case of ECS Fargate. But the idea is that you treat your resources as an abstract pool of resources and just deploy tasks to them as you need to. Now with clusters, you get some additional benefit in the sense that clusters will manage a certain number of tasks that you want to uh, keep running at any point in time. You can also associate it with load balancers to scale your system up pretty easily. And Lambda functions work on the scale of functions or code. So we don't need to worry about EC2 machines. We don't need to worry about Docker containers or any complexity there. We're just operating on code and we can combine it with some other AWS services to achieve some very, very rich functionality. Now the question is, how do we choose between this guy, this guy, and this guy? Right. So I would say picking between these three options is down to flexibility and the knowledge that you already have about each of these three things. Uh, so I'll give you an example. So if you require a large degree of flexibility and you want to completely tune exactly how your application is going to run, then I would say hands down pick EC2. That is definitely going to be the winner for you. You get to pick the instance types, whether it be memory, compute, or storage optimized. You also get to pick the size of the instances. You can install absolutely anything on here. So they're extremely, extremely flexible and able to serve pretty much any use case within some realistic boundaries. Uh, but if you're looking for high flexibility, EC2 is the choice for you. Uh, be aware that at the sacrifice of high flexibility is a high degree of management. So you need to worry about things like security and all this kind of 
complex stuff in terms of hosting your applications. Now, I would say ECS is a pretty fair middle ground. So you kind of still need to worry about EC2s, but a little bit less so because you're just treating them as a pool of abstract resources. And your cluster is really what is in charge of managing uh, what is going on with these EC2 machines in terms of bringing uh, containers up or down. So I would say ECS is a pretty healthy middle ground in terms of complexity and flexibility especially if you're already operating in the Docker ecosystem. And I would say Lambdas are more well suited for people that are just looking to get out the door quickly. Uh, so you really get to offload a lot of the complexity of maintaining applications by just operating on the unit of code. But with that being said, you lose a lot of control. There's only so many levers that you can pull if you want to increase the performance of your Lambda functions. They also have some other trade-offs such as that you can only have have a 30 minutes maximum invocation time for a single Lambda function. And their pricing model is a little bit different. With ECS and EC2, both of them you're only paying for EC2 instances, uh, but with Lambdas you are paying for the number of invocations, the memory allocation for each of those invocations, and the duration of these invocations. So a little bit more complex. Uh, but I would say Lambdas are great. Like you can use them to host some pretty large applications at very, very high throughput, but just keep in mind a lot of the complexity is going to be hidden from you and as a result you're going to have less control over how your application runs. Now with this being said I don't think this is a one-way door. I think you can start with lambda functions if you want to prototype something and get out the door quickly and then switch to something different if you find that lambda functions aren't working for you. Uh, so I hope you found this video useful. I hope you are now armed with enough information to make a decision as to whether or not you want to use EC2, ECS, or Lambda functions. If you're interested in learning about more, I have a whole video on deploying to ECS and just kind of building out a Docker image and deploying that all the way to the ECS ecosystem. I have another one on Lambda, whether or not you want to do that and set it up through the console or not. But again, there's a whole bunch of AWS videos that are on my channel. So if you're interested, uh, please go and check them out. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.